In this video, we'll use deep agents to create a deep research example. You can see here the final result. It'll be an agent that can write to do's and then track them as well. It can also kick off subagents, so it has a research subagent, and we can see that it will use this to do specific research queries. And then we can also see that it has a critique agent at the end that does specific critiques as well. And then it will also write its final output to this final report.md file. And we'll get back this pretty comprehensive report for any question that we ask. So in this video, we'll see how to build this from scratch using Deep Agents, a new package we released for creating agents that can plan over longer time horizons and go deeper into particular tasks. Let's see how it works. All right, so I'm gonna start from scratch with a blank file. The first thing I'm gonna do is implement a search tool. Now this is important because my deep researcher will need to do search to find out the answers to specific sub questions. So in order to implement this tool, we're gonna to use Tavili. Tavili is a search tool for connecting agents to the web. So you can go in, sign up here, get an API key and all of that. Once we've done that, let's go back into our code. We're gonna import the Tavili client from Tavili. We can then go ahead and create an instance of this Tavili client. We're gonna be looking in our environment variables for a Tavili API key. And so you'll need to make sure to expose that. And so let's import the OS package so we can import it there. Great, now that we have this client, we're gonna write a function that'll be the tool that we give the agent. So we can write something like this, a function that takes in a query, which is a string, and then also can optionally take in an integer, which is the max results to include, and then also optionally take in a Boolean of whether to include the raw content or not. And then the description of this, of this function, this is important, this will be the description that we give to the agent when we give it this tool. So now we've got this tool, this is gonna be the backbone of our research agent. Let's go ahead and actually create a really simple research agent that just has this and uses deep agents. So in order to do that, we're just gonna import create deep agent from deep agents. We're gonna write some custom instructions for the deep agent. So let's call this instructions This is pretty basic, and that's because I'm gonna actually improve it a bunch later on. But this is a good placeholder for now. And then let's just do agent equals create deep agent, instructions equals instructions, tools equals internet search. And that's basically it. I now have a deep agent that will go ahead and do some research. So let's actually see how to use this. In order to use it, I'm gonna create this langraph.json file. This is where I point to the file that contains the agent and then the name of the variable where my agent is stored. From here, I can go into the terminal. I can install langraph CLI. And then after I install this, I can do langraph dev to run a developer server for this agent. Going in here, I can see the basic agent here. Let's add in a message and let's ask it something to research. So let's ask it, what is Langgraph? And we can see that it starts by spinning up this general purpose research subagent to research Langgraph comprehensively and all of that. Now, while this is running, I'm actually going to improve the agent. So let's go back. So let's go back to this file and let's add in two subagents and then improve the system prompt. So the first subagent we're going to add is a dedicated researcher agent. In order to do that, we're going to add a dedicated system prompt just for this researcher. So this is the sub research prompt here. And we're then gonna create a dictionary representing this sub research agent. So we're gonna give it a name, research agent. We're gonna give it a description. And so this is gonna be used by the main agent to send questions to it. So use to research more in-depth questions, only give this researcher one topic at a time. Do not pass multiple sub questions to this researcher. And then I'm gonna give it the prompt. So this is the sub research prompt above. And then I'm gonna give it access to tools that I want it to have. And so I want it specifically to only have access to this internet search tool. So great, I'm gonna define that there. Now I'm gonna define another subagent that I'm gonna call the critique subagent. 
And so this is going to be an agent that's specifically used to critique the final report that's been generated so far. So now one thing that I have to think through is how does this critique agent know where the final report is? And for that, I'm going to use the file system, the virtual file system that comes built in with deep agents. So I'm going to modify the system prompt in a second to say, hey, when you've got this final report, write it to a file called finalreport.md. And then this critique agent is going to know to look for that finalreport.md, read that in, and then, and then, and then critique that. Great. So let's do this. I now have this critique prompt. You are a dedicated editor. You bring tasks to critique a report. And so you can see here that I say you can find the report at finalreport.md. And then you can see here that I also say you can find the question topic for this report at question.txt. So one thing I'm also going to want to do is prompt this general agent to write down the original question into question.txt. So this file system can basically be how these agents can communicate with each other in a more structured manner besides just the messages that they send in and out. So this research subagent, this just used the messages. It just took in a question that was the message and it outputted its response as a message and, and it communicated with the main agent via messages. This critique agent is now using files in the file system to communicate. And so this is a, this is a more token efficient way than passing in the final report every time to this, to this critique agent. So after I have this prompt, I can create the dictionary representing the critique agent. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to give it a, a description. And then I'm going to give it a prompt. I'm not going to give it any tools. And so by default, it will inherit all the tools that the main agent has access to, including reading and writing from files, internet search, to-do list, things like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and modify the instructions. And so I'm going to write a lot more detailed instructions. And there's going to be a few key parts of that. So a lot, of this, a lot of this prompt is taken from the deep research repo that we created earlier and that I'll link to. And so that's where a lot of this, this detailed prompts comes from. But I added in a few things specific to deep agents. So the first thing you should do is write the original user question to question.txt. So remember, this is how we communicate the question, the original question that the user asked to the, to the critique agent. So we tell this, this main agent to write it down. We're then going to use the research agent. So we're, we're referencing this, this specific research agent above. We're going to use this to conduct deep research. And then when we have enough information, we're going to write a final report. And we're going to write it to finalreport.md. So again, this is the same file name as we pass the critique agent. So this is how it knows how to write to those files. You, you can then call the critique agent to get a critique of the final report. After that, if needed, you can do more research. So we're giving instructions on basically how and when to call these subagents in a very dedicated manner. And that's because this, this general purpose research agent needs the, that kind of like knowledge of when to use these different agents and, and, and how we want to and how we want it to use those those different agents. And so we're passing that in the prompt. And so now the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to go back down here and we're going to pass in the subagents that we have. One last little thing that we're going to do, we're actually going to set the recursion limit of this agent to 1,000. So by default, this is 25, which means that this agent can run basically 25 different steps. But this is a deep research agent. It might run for a while. So we're going to increase that all the way up to 1,000. If we go back up to Studio, we can see that the agent has finished running and it's created this uh, report. It's not super long, and that's because we're using the more simple prompt and no subagents that we had before. So we're going to try again with these better subagents and this better prompt. Before doing that, we're actually going to set up Deep Agents UI to be able to interact with this agent. So this is a GitHub repo that Nick on our team created, and it's basically a UI for specifically interacting with these deep agents. It visualizes the to-dos, it visualizes the subagents, it shows the file system. This is what you saw at the start of the video. So we've got this running, and we're now going to give it a go. So let's ask it a question like, what is LangGraph? And when we kick it off, we can now see that it streams things back in a nice manner. So first, we can see that it writes this question.txt to a file. Again, this is what we prompted it to do. Now it's creating to-dos. And so if we go over to the tasks, we can see a list of what it's doing. And now it's got one in progress. It's researching LangGraph basics. What is its purpose and key features? 
it now spins up a subagent. So if we click on this, we can see the input. And we're going to wait a little bit for the research agent to come back, the sub research agent to come back, because that's the research agent that's doing all of the work. Here we are about halfway through the process. And so we can see here that the original sub research agent came back with its response and then it kicked off a few more. And so it's now running on a third. We can see here that the tasks two are done. One is in progress and then it's still got some to go. So let's check back in at the end. We can see here that it's created its research. And so if we look in the files, we can see this final report .md, and we can see that we get back a much better and more detailed report than before. So this shows the power of using subagents and also the importance of having a really detailed prompt. This is this is one of the key parts of uh, deep agents in general. They have detailed prompts. So this is a full end-to-end -end example of how to build deep researcher on top of deep agents. Hope you enjoyed.